And now let's finally get into the Jomo show. Let's talk about our men's basketball team. It's been a bit of a tough, it's been a it's been tough sledding since the last time we saw our Golden Grizzlies. They came off a four game win streak that included the two in the in the Cayman Islands against Loyola Marymount and against Marshall. That included opening the Horizon League, or, or not the Horizon League, rather, but going on primetime TV, FS1 hoops against Xavier in the, oh, I forgot what it was, the Cintas Center, that's what it was called. Oakland won in that building on primetime. That's three games in a row. They went to Detroit Mercy, gave them the business. That's four in a row. So they finally come back to the arena to come home for their first Horizon League home game. And they kind of got the doors blown off of them by Purdue Fort Wayne. Ending the four-game win streak. Third game in the in that week. They played. It was Xavier Monday. It was Detroit Wednesday. And then it was Purdue Fort Wayne Saturday. It's a lot of basketball. And it's not usually how the schedule is done. But to get that game against Xavier, you can't be told the media and told us. I'm the media. too. who told us. That they just, they were kind of, they had to have that game on Monday night, the Xavier game. Because it was Xavier's schedule, and it's a chance to be on prime time, and you can't pass that up. You can't uh, just throw that away, because that's a that's a game that now, especially after the result of it, those play, our, our team, those players, are going to remember that for the rest of their lives. So it can't be said he couldn't turn that up. They couldn't pass that up. So it just it had to be three games in a week, and you win two of them, you lose one of them. Overall, it's a good week, but let me get more into the game that's you know, specifically against Purdue Fort Wayne. So it, I'll, I'll be straight up with you guys. Purdue Fort Wayne was out of their skull. Purdue Fort Wayne, the Mastodons were out of this world. Unbelievable the performance that they had in the arena. Final score was 77 to 98 in favor of the Mastodons. It was something, can't be described it, and he said, Almost per- or almost verbatim, this is one of the greatest performances he's ever seen an opponent come in and give. He's never seen a performance like this. In 40 years of coaching at Oakland, never seen an, an opponent do that in our house. And was it that Oakland was terrible? Was it that Oakland couldn't make any shots, couldn't play any defense? Not, not as much as you would think. Obviously, there were some issues. Some you could say due to fatigue. Some could just be the bad day. Some of them could be stuff that needs improvement. But when you got stats like this, when you got shooting splits for Purdue Fort Wayne as a team from the floor and from three, they were like 65%. From both. It was, you could not, I was in the stands. I wasn't working that game. So I was trying to get the crowd going a little bit. You know me. I tried to get the crowd going a little bit. And it was... Purdue Fort Wayne made it impossible. They made almost every shot. They made more than they missed. And then add 10% more onto that. Add 15% more onto that. That's what they were shooting. It was... I've never seen something like that before. They have a guy, Quentin Morton Robertson... He is 5'8". I am 5'9", allegedly. And he shot 5 of 8 from 3 and 6 of 10 from the field for 17 points. No free throws. All field goals. And he wasn't even a leading scorer. He wasn't even the only one to have 17 points. Jalen Jackson from Purdue Fort Wayne was a perfect 7 from 7 and an almost perfect... Three or four from the free throw line for his 17 points. Rashid Bello, six of nine from the floor, four of six from three for 16 points, no free throws. And then the leading scorer for the Macedons, Anthony Roberts, eight of 10 from the field, two of two from three, two of two from the line, 20 points. You see what I'm saying? You don't see numbers like this. This doesn't happen very often. This is a. The planets aligned, and it just was incredible. So, it, to me as a fan, I don't see that game as the destruction of what we built. No, 
They had a historic game. I would doubt that it's sustainable at this rate over 60, like I said, over like 65 ish percent from the floor and from three. That's not going to happen every game. I, I have my doubts statistically, mathematically, and logically. I might doubt that that's ever going to happen again. But it did. And it was in conference play and it was a home game. So, however you shake it out, it still results in a loss and it still affects the seeding in the Horizon League. So, it kind of sucked. But it, it was it, I, it was a game none of us have ever seen before. It was great. And just for Golden Grizzly shoutouts, DQ Cole... Season high, 21 points, 7 of 14 from the field, 3 of 8 from 3, 4 of 5 from the line with 7 rebounds and 4 assists. Really good game from DQ, but a lot of it, sadly, was garbage time. It, it was, There was a point in the game where Oakland was within, I believe, like a couple of shots, but it, it's just, it's, there was no stop in this team. That That's just how it shook out. So... That one was tough, but what's tougher is the next game I'm about to tell you about is the men's team as they hosted Toledo. I got audio from the game of this one. Me and Drew Allison were on the call for this game, and I got audio for how this game went. And it went down to the wire. Final score was 69-68 Toledo win. And it was neutrally for basketball's sake. It was a great game. Oakland... We're, we're in the lead. They looked like they were in control early in the first half. They had a lead shrink from 8 to 4 in the last 60 seconds of the first half, though. And that's when the game was back and forth. That's when the game was even. That's when you know it, it became do or die, basically, for the Golden Grizzlies. And... Let me just play the audio for you guys. I'm a, I want to play. I made sure to save it. This is the last call from the game. This is the last play. I'll kind of, I kind of paint the picture in the call, but basically there's three and a half seconds left. Oakland's down by one. Blake Landman's going to inbound it, and we'll see who gets the ball. 3.5 to go, 69-68. Oakland down by one, and they need it badly. Waiting for the inbound. Oakland's going to have it. Blake Landman will inbound the ball. What do the Golden Grizzlies do? They have motion. Trey Townsend going for it underneath the basket. Can he make the final shot? He can't. And the Toledo Rockets will take it in the final seconds. 69-68. Wow. Yeah, that was a heartbreaker. That that one was that one was tough to sit through or, or tough to watch. You just were so shocked. I mean, the adrenaline was going in the building. I mean, obviously, it's a last second shot. You're down by one. It could win the game. It's got everything you need. All on a Wednesday night. And to kind of give a paint a little bit more of that last play. So where we were sitting in the media bench, where if you're sitting in the student section, we're the left sideline, and it's the it's the far court by the bo- by the video board. So Blake Lamon is inbounding it right in front of us, and Trey Townsend is on the right side of the basket, close to baseline. He gets the pass, and with and if he took an extra second or two, him and coach they kind of mentioned that maybe he could have taken an extra dribble, but basically Trey took it, jumped right in the air, tried to get it off the right glass to lay it in. But Toledo was getting a little physical. They got underneath them, kind of put, changed his position a little bit. And the ball couldn't find the glass necessary for the shot. It was an incredible game. It's a shame that it came down the way it did. But for us here at the radio station, at least, we submitted that one to the Michigan Association of Broadcasters because they got their uh, the MAB awards, uh, the student awards for high school and college. We use that as a submission. You, cu- you can cut five minutes up and send it out. So it ended up being good for us. It's a good game, but you, just, you really just wish you could have that one. But not to worry, as their next game was one to celebrate. It was one to get the frustration out. But wh- I, I left. I forgot a point about the Toledo game. So this was the return of Blake Lantman. Uh, this is a big story, so that's why I wanted to mention it. But but prior, you know, I mentioned Blake Lantman was on the inbound. You know, he is, hasn't played for most of the season. He's had a hip injury, and 
the fifth year leader for the Golden Grizzlies was only able to kind of semi coach on the bench. But he was finally able to come back. It, it was up in the air whether he was going to need surgery that would end the season and maybe have to even redshirt him. But he was able to go, and coach was only going to play him about like 10 minutes. He ended up playing 28 as he started out the game three for three from three. And, you know, the fate of a shooter, you know, got, you know, got cold a little bit, ended up making a couple more shots at the end, good defensive plays, was running the point. You know, so it, him and Jack Golke making threes, especially at the beginning of the game when they were hot, it, it was awesome to see. And hopefully the 28 minutes wasn't too much for the first game coming back, but Blake and Jack at the same time is – that's that's quite a backcourt. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Th- those threes are going to come from somewhere. So for the game, as far as the stat sheet goes, kind of spread out in the scoring. Trey Townsend led with 14. Blake Lamin with 14 as well. And Jack Golke with 13. And overall, the team shot 34.6% from three. Not bad. But just one play away. So finally, okay, now let's move on. Friday, they went to Ypsilanti to face the Eastern Michigan Eagles. That game, they gave them the business. They came, they, they, as Justin said on the broadcast, Justin and Joey were over in Ypsilanti. This was an away game, by the way. And WXLU was there traveling. And as Justin Shepard, our color commentator, he put it, you came into their house and stole everything. The milk, the bread, the eggs, the cookies. They came into their house and took everything. And it was quite the game to listen to. We'll get... The game's uploaded to YouTube shortly now that the semester's over. I got a bit of a backlog of games to upload and and cut up highlights of. So stay tuned to WXLU Sports on YouTube to find those. But moving on to the Eastern Michigan game, final score, 77-63. Golden Grizzlies, they get back into the win column. And as for the box score, Trey Townsend, 22 points. Business as usual, 9 of 12 from the field. Four of seven from the line, nine rebounds, an assist, a steal. That's that's classic. That's what he does. That's why, you know, he put himself on the map. I mean, he's been on the map, at least in our eyes at Oakland. But after the Xavier game, he was 28-7-6. and six. This game, 22-9-1. And, and but, you know, he, he's the guy. There's a reason he was picked first preseason first team All-Horizon League. I got a good feeling that he's going to have that at the end of the season. Jack Golke was 3 of 9 from 3 for 11 points. DQ Cole, 5 of 10 from the field, 1 of 4 from 3 for 11 points himself. He had himself 6 rebounds. Him, both DQ and Jack are surprised, like, get into the rebound category quite often. And you wouldn't expect that just simply by their position, but they go and get boards. And Isaiah Jones, he was 9. He had nine points with four of seven from the field, and he made a three-pointer himself. So them, amongst other Golden Grizzlies, had a great game. 51% from the floor. A little bit of a down shooting night from the three, 30.4%. So uh, otherwise, really good game. Way to get back into the win column. Get yourself primed and ready for finals. Have yourself a nice break. And then head to Michigan State on Monday. So overall, as it stands today on the Joe Mo Show... The Golden Grizzlies are 6-5 and five overall and 1-1 one and one in Horizon League. And they will finish off, I'll repeat it again, they'll finish off their non-conference schedule with going to Michigan State Monday at 7 p.m. We'll be there on WXOU. They also will travel to Dayton on Wednesday the 20th at 7 p.m. We won't be covering that one, but one to keep an eye out for. It's short turnaround, another away game, last one non-conference. And then Horizon League play will start on December 28th against Cleveland State and then at Youngstown State on New Year's Eve. Both those games are away. As last year, they they hosted both of the Christmas break um, new, slash New Year's game. I was on a, me and Ben Schrader were on the call for both of them. And those games are a lot of fun to do. But anyway, 
We're already at the 20-minute mark. We haven't talked about women's basketball yet or club hockey. That's going to be coming up soon on the Joe Mo Show, so get ready. But before we do and before we throw it to PSA, let me tell you about Round Ball Radio. If you like more basketball, if you don't like the way I'm talking about it and you want something else, you want a fresh voice, you want someone who's more experienced with basketball, then Round Ball Radio is the place to be. Join DJ Deshaun Fridays at 5 p.m. for an all-inclusive talk and analysis on the game of basketball. Whether you're a fan of the NBA, the NCAA, or Oakland Athletics, Roundball Radio has you covered. Listen to Roundball Radio Fridays at 5 right here on WXOU. We'll be right back with women's basketball and club hockey. Welcome back, everybody, to the Joe Mo Show. Giovanni Mosheri here is your host, sports media director of WXOU. We just covered men's basketball, so if you missed it, be sure to check out YouTube and Spotify to find it at any time. That should come up probably. That should be out on YouTube probably tomorrow. Just look for the Jomo Show on YouTube. The G I O M O shows. Nothing else spelled like it. Nothing else like it. So you'll find it if you Google it. So <laughs> that is the way to find it. So let's get into women's basketball. We'll finish up the Oakland sports segment for this week. So bit of a tougher sledding. Better bit of a bit of a tougher stretch for women's basketball for Oakland University. So they started off Horizon League play. This is November 30th. I mean, we've been gone for a little bit. So this is November 30th where Oakland hosted Purdue Fort Wayne. It was kind of similar schedule to open up the Horizon League. Oakland, men's and women's, they played both Purdue Fort Wayne and Detroit at home for the Mastodons, away for the Titans. So similar opponents for the women's team, but kind of a similar result as well. For Purdue Fort Wayne, they played a... Great game themselves. I mentioned before the men's team, they were like over 65% from the field and from three. Well, the women's team weren't far behind. 55% from the floor, 52, or excuse me, 53% from three for a final score of 84-66. Sadly, the game wasn't that close. It was just one of those games, stinks that it has to be Horizon League, but something was going on. Something on those Purdue-Fort Wayne buses, something is in the water there for the Mastodons. They played a great week of basketball against Oakland. So we won't go too deep into that game. We'll just move on politely to Detroit Mercy, where they played at Detroit in Callahan Hall. I was also there with Joey Hayes on the call. I got to see with my own two eyes. And basically, again, this is a game I'm not going to talk about too much, but it was a tough loss, 66-55 to to the Detroit Mercy Titans. Titans who are looking to be picking it up in the Horizon League, and they got quite they got quite the roster. That's that's some team they got over there in Detroit, where they got two of the top five rebounders in the league so far, and that means there's not a lot of room in the paint. And Oakland struggled in the paint against the Titans, and sadly it was it stayed usually at about eight to, you know, we'll say. Off of memory, 7 to 10 points was about where the lead was for most of the game. It, it is what it is. That's where I'll leave it. So, moving on. They were supposed to have a game against Xavier as well, but that game had to be postponed as Xavier literally did not have enough people to do the game, to play the game. So, they had to postpone that. So, I'm not sure when that game is going to be coming up next, but they move right along to host Central Michigan. Now that's a game that I'm going to spend some time on. This is one that was worthy of a Joe Mo Show preview on Instagram. So if you're not aware, follow me at the G-I-O-M-O Show on Instagram and you can get the Joe Mo Show previews. Follow me on Twitter. You get those as well at G-I-O Mo Sherry W-X-O-U. If you're watching on YouTube, it's on screen. But if you're not, a quick Google search and like any stalker, you'll be able to find me. Like any good stalker, any good fan would. So, they hosted Chippewa. <laughs> I almost said it. I almost said Chippewa Valley, but the the Central Michigan Chippewas. Chippewa Valley was my old school district, and I always get confused when I'm talking about CMU. But that was so they played. That was Saturday too, and I was there for ESPN Plus sideline. So I got I got a pretty good view of the action that went down, and to kind of reiterate what I talked about in the preview that game was hopeless first three quarters 
No, no bueno. All right. It was not good. In the first three, I'll, I'll give you the shooting splits for Central Michigan in the first three quarters. First quarter from the, or this is all from the field. First quarter, 64%. Second quarter, 43%. Third quarter, 58%, all from the field. And, you know, just an indication, like the, the game was not close. Oakland was down at by 20 at halfway through the third quarter. The end of the quarter, down 14. There was no gas. Oakland had, again, their struggles in the paint, especially because Central Michigan had a 6-5 player in the middle of the paint. It, like she didn't, she didn't have to jump to get rebounds and layups and putbacks and you know grab her own offensive rebounds. It, it, it didn't look fair, and especially because Oakland's a little bit light, lighter in the size, size department, lighter as in like number of roster. They had a couple of injuries, so the players still trying to get kind of back into it. Cam Grant and Leanna Baxter, namely the, the over six feet players. So Central Michigan was definitely attacking their weakness, and it it looked like a wash. I'm writing, I'm on the sideline. I'm writing questions for coach for halftime and for post game, and I'm like, what? what? I'm like, what the hell am I going to ask her, coach? Uh, R- coach Deanna Richard. Because I mean, I, I've asked questions. I've done this before in losses like this, but like, I, I didn't. You know, beyond one, maybe two questions, I'm like, I don't even know like where to go with this. This this game is a total wash. And then the fourth quarter happens. And then Oakland flies out of the gate like a bat out of hell. Going into the fourth quarter, they open it up with a 17-2 and run. And they're right back in this. First, like first five minutes after the fourth quarter media timeout, it's about at five minutes. The game was like, it's a game now. Oakland scratched and clawed, got everything right. They rebounded. They made their shots. They made stops. They they did everything you have to do to get back in the game. And the momentum, you could feel it. The crowd was getting into it. It was a loud crowd. And I know women's basketball, they don't get, in terms of, like, let's say, population numbers, they don't get a whole lot of people. But, man... That place was buzzing. They were on that run. Every game, it piled on and on and on where they would get a shot. Maddie Skorupski had a career game. We'll talk about her stats in a little bit, but she was a big piece in that comeback. Both her, Linda Van Schaik, Kennedy Montu, the, the, leading, like, the leading scorers of the game. Every shot they made made the crowd louder. Every rebound, it was even louder. A stop, a steal, Maddie would Maddie Skrupski would get a steal and then a three pointer in transition. It was exhilarating. So it was going back and forth. Once it got up to about even, they were trading blows back and forth a little bit. And Oakland were able to come out on top. It was like last second. It was free throws needed. I believe I believe it was Mary Mabizum that was taking free throws at the end, but did enough to get the win. And to come back from the depths of despair. And my questions for Coach and for then eventually Linda on TV. Those questions got a lot more fun. Instead of like, you know, Coach, what you know, what have you got? What have you learned from your team uh, from from this game? What have they taught you going forward? No, I asked like, I, I said like, what else but whoa? What else but wow? You know, how did you guys do that? And then I was able to ask a funny one where it was like. Um, you know, the, the Toledo game is ugly sweater night. So I asked her like, Hey, you got one picked out yet? So that's the thing. Like, it, it made things just a whole lot easier. And it was so fun. We got pictures from the game courtesy of Andrew Deacon. He's our program director and he's got a nice camera. So WXLU.org, WXLU sports on YouTube. Be sure to stay plugged in. Cause we're going to have, we're going to have content from those games coming out real soon, but it was just a fantastic game. I mentioned the stats. Skorupski, had 19 points, career high for her. 6 of 12 from the field, 4 of 8 from 3, 3 of 4 from the line, and with 4 steals. Most of them, I'm sure, coming in the 4th quarter. I mean, I don't know by the numbers, but most of them felt like they were from the 4th quarter. Linda Van Schaik, 17 points, 5 of 15 from the field, 3 of 10 from the, from the arc, 4 of 4 from the line. Kennedy Montu. 
16 or excuse me, six of 15 from the floor, three of eight from three, one of two from the line, 16 points. So, I mean, it was that game was a lot of fun. I can't wait to get the recording of that one and get that one out so you guys can catch up on things a little bit. Here's some of the highlight calls from such an exhilarating game. So that will wrap up women's basketball. We're not going to go to break yet. We'll cover de- we'll cover the hockey real quickly. There's not much uh, to talk about there, unfortunately. Um. So yeah, for women's basketball right now, they are four four. You know, their their record they're four and four overall. Zero and two in Horizon League. And like I mentioned before, they're going to stay home for the rest of the calendar year. They're going to host Toledo Sunday at seven p.m. and they're going to host Miami of Ohio Thursday seven p.m. So be sure to go to GoldenGrizzlies.com, get the schedules, go to WXLU.org, just for fun. <laughs> but keep up to date with the schedule. The Instagram is the place to be. Our stories, we make sure to update you guys. We'll get posts up. Follow everything. Keep up to date. Do, do yourself a favor. So move on real quick to club sports. D1 club hockey, tough sledding. And, you know, I, I've, there's a lot of sledding going on. I know I've been saying that a little bit, but... They played John Carroll both at home and away. Lost both matches, sadly, for the D1 team. D3, they played two games against Lawrence Tech. Similar deal, one away, one at home. First game, Friday, December 1st. It was... What was, what was the score of that one? It was a loss to the to the Blue Devils, 8-4. to four. And then Oakland were close to getting... I'm just I'm sorry, the reading the notes here, a little, little weird... But close to avoiding the sweep, kind of late game goals gave Lawrence Tech the sweep against us. Score the second game was four to two, and then they also played on Friday the eighth. They hosted at the Birmingham Ice Arena, the University of Flint. Excuse me, University of Michigan, Flint. They hosted their team. They got the win. Five to one, and we got a recording of that one from WXLU as well. We got we got our hockey guys. We got Drew and we got Noah, we got Drew Allison and Noah Stalker. We got them on the call. I'll get that up on the YouTube page soon. Quit yelling at me. I'm working on it. So we're gonna get that one up because we. I mean, we don't get to cover the hockey games often. We got a couple of them covered. This one being the third hockey game that we've covered. So looking forward to working through that one. And for both the hockey teams, you can follow them on social media. They got. Um, for the D1 team, you could go to oaklandhockey.org for their information. You could go to at Oakland Hockey on Twitter. They'll post live uh, live updates during the games. For the D3 team, you can find them on Instagram at O-U-D-3 Hockey, O-U underscore D3 underscore Hockey. And you can go to their website as well. It's linked in their social media. The, the link is too long to say. But <laughs> they keep very good notes and stories and writing up on that website. So be sure to stay connected to your Oakland hockey teams. So then that will wrap up the Oakland sports section of the Joe Mo show coming up next. We got the state of the Detroit lions. And then we got a little conversation about Tommy DeVito and the coverage and the situation with the New York giants. You know what? Scratch that. I'm going to start with the Tommy DeVito thing and then we'll get to the Joe Mo show picks. And if there's time, I'll go to the lions you know, if there's not time, then I can record that separately, put it up to YouTube. Another reason to subscribe. So, yeah, when we get back from break, we're going to do the Tommy DeVito segment. We're going to do the Joe Mo Show picks. And then we'll get to the lines if there's time. If not, YouTube. But before we go to break, tune in Mondays at 2 p.m. for the ultimate radio show for Detroit basketball and football aficionados. It's the Blue Ski Mask Show. This thrilling program hosted by Oakland Post sports editor Brock Hillig and sports reporter Kurt Szymanski. They take you on an exhilarating ride through the world of Detroit Lions and Detroit Pistons. Get ready for in-depth analysis, player spotlights, game reviews, and expert highlights all centered around the NFL and the NBA action in the Motor City. Join us and stay connected to the heartbeat of the city's sports scene and never miss a beat of the action. The Blue Ski Mask Show, Monday is 2 p.m., on WXOU. We'll be right back with more Jomo Show.